Hello my soccer universe. Today is the day Euro 2020 starts in 21. Uh, this will be a curious note in the history books and yeah it's time for my uh, final pre-tournament projection uh, prediction however you want to call it but also I want to preview the groups a little bit and uh, you know a little bit in a steady way as well so brace yourself this will be a little bit of a bigger video um, first of all my general thoughts and then I want to uh, tell you what everything I adjusted actually my ratings and therefore my simulations a little bit to take care of a few things that I really think might have a big influence on the tournament. The first and foremost is, and we see it already with Spain and Sweden a little bit happening, COVID. If a squad is hit by COVID, this can have a huge impact on the uh, entire squad and then on the tournament. So uh, while UEFA is trying, you know, you need to have at least 13 players available to be able to play. Uh, we can postpone a game for, I think, up to 48 hours and then it will be played in the 12 o'clock slot. To be honest, I think, I mean, especially the postponement is a little bit, um, yeah, I don't think if you are hit that you can postpone that much and then it, it may or may not happen. However, you know, I know they're trying to do uh, the best possible uh, to at least accommodate the um, um, teams that will be hit. The one thing is, though, if you are not able to play, the opponent gets a 3-0 victory and I understand why they're doing it. It doesn't seem all, it doesn't seem quite fair, but I don't see a better alternative to, to be honest, because the tournament needs to be played within a certain set of times. You need to keep the bubbles, but and yeah, it doesn't help if you're shuffling teams back and forth throughout Europe. And I'm looking now especially at Group E where um, we moved from Bilbao to Sevilla. Okay, I know there were some health uh, departments in the Basque country that made that possible. But uh, also then having self double in St. Petersburg, which makes it a, a group that is very much uh, split between two locations, similar to Group A uh, between Rome and Baku. I think all the other groups are a little bit more reasonable geographically. I honestly would have wished that the groups would really go only geographically. I think, I mean, what we have in Group D with London and Glasgow, uh, that's near perfection. I also think of Munich and um, Budapest. Those are two, two, two groups that are very well geographically located. We might have done it a little bit differently, but you know. So yeah, having said that, in all of my simulations, and I am simulating the team, uh, the tournament 10,000 times, so every number that you get is based on 10,000 sim simulations. One thing that I have done is I have randomly assigned teams, uh, or the mine might have been out, I said uh, randomly every team had a threshold of, uh, I think it was 2.5% uh, of being hit prior to any match with COVID. And then uh, I randomly said, okay, and this is how hard you get hit. And once you get hit, you always had a chance to get a little bit healthier uh, until you fell under a certain threshold and then you were healthy again. So uh, this I did throughout the tour to tournament at, at every match day, uh, even ahead of a final, that the rating can take a COVID hit uh, and up to a quite serious one. Um, you know, going one point down uh, at worst. So I, I really wanted to get that in. I knew uh, the reason is not that it will change much the strength because it could hit any team, but the reason is to get a little bit of a broader range. It, it allows, uh, it increases in general uh, the chances of more teams, especially if the bigger teams are hit. So uh, that was one thing. Uh, second thing that I think will have a pretty big impact is minutes played in the season. And I'm looking here at a chart that I that I was told on the podcast, but uh, you can find on Twitter, Rahul Aya32, at Rahul Aya32, who plotted the average squad uh, age versus the uh, average minutes played in a season. And we will look at this for each team sep separately in this video, we, we will as well. But I think this is a an, an really, really relevant chart. 
it reminds me a lot of the 2002 World Cup where there were many games being played and then uh, big teams like uh, I think especially Spain and Italy who had played a whole lot of the you know this was a Champions League time where we had two group stages and, and, and so you could see that this had a real impact also then 2004 it was going a little bit more there too so um, I think that rest factor can have a big impact and I'm looking if you look at this graph and it's also annotated um, England, the England squad has the most minutes played. What will help them is that they have a relatively young squad. I think you can recover quicker when you're young, but this might definitely be a factor. I'm also looking at teams like France and Germany and Portugal, who have to play themselves in, the, in, in a group, so we might see this a little bit later. Uh, those are some of the most talented teams out there that I'm saying uh, that I'm talk talking about here, but it really could have a big impact. Uh, the good thing is for this squad that I think all the top teams have many minutes. I mean, look at Spain, they're up there. We have Italy up there. We have Croatia up there. We have the Netherlands up there. Uh, Belgium, curiously, is not as far up there. So uh, they might be a little bit rested, but I think they are individual players that have played a lot of minutes. Uh, the problem, I think, with Belgium is that the squad is really, really old. It's the oldest squad in the Tour tournament. I think this will have a uh, big impact. So um, we can actually... See, I mean, they point out Turkey and Ukraine as teams where the players have not played as much and that they're relatively young. I think that the young actually will work against them. I'm looking more at a team like Denmark uh, that has that is quite well, um, potentially Switzerland, potentially Poland, that could use this to their advantage. So, um, as I said, I will we'll look at it squad by squad as well. So what I did is I basically said if you have an average age of around uh, ideally 26 and a half, I think this is a perfect age for um, for a team. And if you have played around 2,500 minutes on average in the squad, this would be the ideal point. And then I complete, uh, computed the distance by uh, taking the differences square, uh, you know, putting all the same scales, squaring difference, blah, 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 stuff. So the further away you are from this ideal, the harder you can get hit towards the tournament. And again, the longer the tournament is, the bigger the impact might be. So uh, that's also what I do, because I think even for age, if your squad is too young, I think this will catch up later with you. If your squad is too old, I think this also can catch up later with you. Um, I think there is a sweet spot in both. Uh, and uh, also, if you have too little minutes played, you might be fresh, but you also might be rusty. So, you know, trade-offs. Trade-offs uh, trade there. So, this is also what I did in there, but I also assigned this. Yes, the, you get hit, but in every sim simulation, you get differently hit. So, um, a little bit pulling this down on average as well. With all this preamble, so those are the two things that I think will have a huge impact and I've been agonizing over this a whole lot. Let's look at the groups uh, individually and I'll go run through the groups. I'll show you, as in group A here, uh, the average ratings that I had for these teams and we can see that Italy in this group, and this is a, for me one of the toughest groups to call, Italy a little bit ahead of the rest, but I think that Switzerland, Turkey and Wales are more or less level. Now this is all without home field advantage and Italy enjoys home field advantage. They play all their games in Rome, although only about 25% at most field. Um, and Turkey will have a home field advantage in Azerbaijan. They are neighboring countries that are very well diplomatically with, with each other. Um, if there's a neutral, uh, you know, anyone from Azerbaijan will very likely cheer for Turkey. So Turkey will have a home field advantage that might actually push them a little bit towards Switzerland. Uh, Wales is kind of a mixed bag where I, you know, they could move a little bit higher, but I, I see them as the weakest squad in here. Um, as we will see, um, I think Switzerland and Turkey are on a level. It is for me not inconceivable that Switzerland, Turkey and Wales finish ahead of Italy if Italy have a bad start. And you know, you saw 
Um, the Graf Italy has, squad has many minutes misplayed, but overall I think Italy is the class of this group. And it's more or less who will join Italy going forward. Not to say that Italy will win this group. And it actually, I will make a point later, it might actually not bad for Italy to finish in second. We have heard that before 2016. If you look at the Italy squad, I think when I look at uh, the age composition and how many minutes they have played and you see the the mid range is where 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 they should be okay. I actually really like the makeup of Italy. Maybe a little bit too high on the number of minutes played, especially when I look at Barella um, and Insigne. Other than that, I think this looks pretty, pretty good uh, uh, for Italy. So I like that. If you look for a comparison, Switzerland is maybe too similar in the um, age makeup, but having less minutes played. And we know that Switzerland is definitely a squad that is, um, you know, typically European team, uh, hard to break down, not spectacular. And that is something typically Swiss in many ways. So I actually think that the Swiss team is a rather, rather stable one. If you move over to Turkey, you definitely can, can see it's a very, very young squad uh, with not many minutes played. However, the the most important players like Noglu uh, and uh, where is he? Yaziki is in there, Karaman, uh, Burak Yilmaz, of course, the oldest the captain. They are kind of in this range, yeah, having a little bit more minutes played. Um, Galaxy that and for Wales the same thing a very similar story maybe a little bit more scattered uh, there's not a really really old player in there except you take Hennessy as the goalkeeper but that is always a different story so with all that and this is all Rahul Aya uh, a great graph uh, that he he did I call I copied I didn't want to repeat it on my own so giving all credit this is I think this is one of the or might be one of the most useful graphs that we will get for this entire tournament. So having said all that, I project that Italy will win this group rather easily. Turkey very close to Switzerland, but just behind Switzerland. Although I think it's not inconceivable that Turkey will finish second in, the, in this group if Italy uh, is the class of going and Wales finishing fourth. So this is how I see this group going. Uh, we can also see with uh, predictions going forward, Italy making it to the next round is a 92% chance. Uh, Swiss, Switzerland and Turkey also having pretty good chances of moving on there. Uh, and then Italy has an 8% chance of winning it all. Moving on to Group B. Uh, that, that, that group is a little bit more spread out. However, we have also two teams with a home field advantage. Denmark, and I think this will could play a big role. Uh, plays three games at home, Russia plays two at home. Also Finland uh, for the games in St. Petersburg will enjoy a slight advantage if the Finns can travel because that's just from Helsinki to St. Petersburg. It's not that big of a trip as well. So I, I would give Finland also a slight advantage there. Um, I have given them a half home field for the two uh, for the game that they play against Belgium in St. Pe in St. Petersburg. So uh, just saying that. Uh, overall, Belgium should be the strongest team. They are one of the highest rated teams in there. Uh, Denmark is second. Russia then already fall falling off. And Finland is, of course, the weakest squad. However, Finland has a good squad structure. Uh, they will, you know, a little bit like Iceland, you know, hard to break down. Let's put it with it that way. If I look at the squad, I mean, the one thing for um, Belgium is that except for Tielemans, who probably can take it because he's young, all the big boys are in the sweet spot. They, they haven't played them. I mean, Lukaku, yeah, probably a little, a little bit, a little bit over, but. Uh, um, when we see Benteke, uh, Mertens, they are all in the good spot. I'm, I don't find the Bruyne, but he's probably there. Hazard, of course, has played next to nothing because he was always injured. So that might also play. He might have played too little. So I think this is a very interesting graph. I also think that Lukaku probably, uh, he has played many minutes, but I, I actually think since Inter became champion so early, uh, might have actually pl uh, played also in his favor so yeah 
Belgium, I think from that makeup, Belgium looks good. Maybe a little bit too much on the old side. That's that 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 might be a worry there. Russia, not much played. Um, and yeah, I think the age make may make up it also a little bit maybe on the too old side, but I think overall looking quite good. Uh, I really like Denmark. I really like Denmark. They may have trouble up front scoring. But if they can take care of that, I think we won't see many high scorers scoring games. So you just have to find the breakthrough. This Denmark side, I think, is super, super dangerous uh, and looks in every regard. I mean, this is almost a perfect graph. You have many uh, young players. I mean, the, the only really old player that has played a lot is Kasper Schmeichel. And for a goalie, I think that doesn't uh, make too much. Heuberg, maybe. That's the one where we might have to. So, but I think this Denmark squad is actually quite loaded in many ways so i really like i like denmark uh finland i don't think that um over being overplayed might be a problem uh, yeah we have a, like a puki and Jorinen and kamara maybe but i think finland should be fine i also like their age makeup quite some it's maybe a, a, a problem that they have played too mi too little minutes and so with that what my vaults were projecting, I said, I like Denmark. I really do. And I have them in second behind Belgium. I can't even imagine uh, Denmark winning this group. So these are my my surprise team there. Um, Russia has surprised us at the World Cup. Um, I just know that in qualifying, they play against Belgium were soundly beaten twice. And I think Denmark playing at home against Russia um, also, this will not play in Russia's favor. Um, so therefore, I think Denmark is the team to watch in this group. For Group C, uh, overall ratings, this one is the weakest one of all of them, uh, the, the weakest group. Um, and despite the Netherlands, they enjoyed two advantages, uh, having the strongest squad, at least on paper, and having home, home, home of the advantage. But I was I did not do it. But I'm really I, I was really close to say that for Austria and the Netherlands the rating should take a dip because of the inappropriate coaching that they have. I think those are two teams that definitely um, will get hit. Austria seems to be level on Ukraine. I actually think that Austria is in severe danger to finishing last in this group again because. Um, I've seen both games against North Macedonia. Uh, the first one away from home, they they got it and they played. Uh, this was then in the end one of the better performances. But what they did um, at home, it was not convincing. And I, Austria is not convincing at the moment. I would say Ukraine probably has the most cohesive squad in this group and could cause an upset over the Netherlands. And then they will win this group. Uh, their squad makeup of Ukraine, again, not too many games played. I think that they have two really, really, really good players in uh, Zinchenko and Malinowski. I think those two are the ones to watch. And then uh, they have built, I mean, it's not, it's not exciting, but it's very useful what they are putting out. Uh, so let's see. I think Ukraine is the team to watch in this group. The Netherlands, I think I like from the overall makeup really well because you have enough young talent in there that hasn't played too, uh, too much. The one player to watch and a uh, crucial player for the Netherlands is Frankie de Jong, who might be a little bit overplayed. And as I said, with the coach taking more or less a dive there. Uh, Austria also, I mean, the Austrian squad, I mean, from all the metrics, I think they are all very talented. They are in the right age makeup. I mean, even David Alaba, who is now, you know, seemingly the star in those things. Uh, people might think he's, he's old. No, he's just 20, 28. He's in his prime. So uh, that is pretty good for the Austrian team. I just see how they're playing. They're not playing what what they are innate nature is of playing because the coach is keeping them on the leash. And it's rather boring. As I said, I think Austria has a good chance of finishing fourth, maybe not in my, my projection, that, that is my feeling. And North Macedonia uh, may be veering a bit on the old, older or a little bit too in, 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 in experience. I think they could cause an upset against Austria, but I think that's where the, the buck stops. And so, yeah, I have the Netherlands because of home form over the much ahead, ahead of Ukraine. 
but watch out for Ukraine. Uh, like Denmark, this is a team that could surprise. Uh, I don't think that Austria will surprise. So yeah, then let's go to Group D. England above the rest and then also Croatia ahead of the Czechs and the Scots. However, I, if we look at it, the England squad, as I said, very, very young, but very many minutes played. Uh, looking here at Maguire, Mason Mount, Harry Kane, uh, you know, Marcus Rashford. Those are players that might be a little bit overplayed. It will be very important here to have a good squad rotation. The schedule is maybe not working exactly in England's favor because the on paper toughest opponent is Croatia. Uh, where you have to get, you cannot really ease in but you know it might also also help against scotland the biggest game probably in the first round at least from the emotional level i think there are a few others in other groups that might be a little bit more interesting but um it's definitely the most emotional one um and then you play against the czechs and yeah i think a good squad rotation will be key for uh, in England if they were to progress further. Uh, not so sure about this Croatia squad. I think on paper really good, uh, really good players here and there. However, Modric is past his prime, uh, you know, and the Brozovic and the Kovacic, uh, Pasalic, I'm not sure if they can really pull it out. Defense is a little bit of uh, a concern as well. So we gotta, gotta see, but I think Croatia should have enough to finish um, in, in a qualifying spot. The Czechs for me are my bogey team here. I think the Czechs have, can sh and some days they can be brilliant. Watch Thomas Suchek. Who might also be overplayed on other days they are complete throwaways like they were in the friendly against italy so we have to see the checks might be a box of full of surprises uh, as for the scots having two home games more or less might play in their favor i think they have a pretty decent they have some pretty decent players but quality wise of course they are below the other teams if home field advantage can do something for them that remains to be seen. Um, it is their first tour to the tournament. Maybe at some points a little bit oldish, the squad, um, but they're definitely not overplayed. So this might be in their favor. As I said, England ahead of Croatia, ahead of the Czechs, and then Scotland, despite home field advantage. Going further to Group E, uh, we have here Spain, Poland, Slovakia, and Sweden. If it wasn't for COVID, I would, I would say Spain is the class of, of this group with Poland and Sweden really, really close together. Uh, I have a really hard time picking between Poland and Sweden, to, to be honest. Poland, maybe it's a little bit higher rated. They have, on paper, the better players, but Sweden is a very cohesive squad. Um, and both can probably hurt Spain a little bit, although Spain on their day is untouchable for them, I, I would say. Slovakia, to me, is a team that honestly should not be there. Um, they snuck into the back door. All their Nations League showings were rather poor. I don't see Slovakia doing much. Uh, they have some dangerous players, but I don't see Slovakia being doing, doing much. I think Sweden is a team to watch there. Uh, if you look at the age makeup, I do not like for Spain that it's kind of on this diagonal um, and a little bit high in terms of minutes played. This could, and, uh, and then if you look all, all, also as named the big names also rather high on the list there uh similar for poland but not as many games played so uh that might play in their favor but it's really the, the older players have played many minutes that not necessarily a good thing uh and for poland i always have the um, a worry that they are playing too much to Lewandowski, and Lewandowski does, 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 doesn't get too much supply although they really have great players they do so uh i think if poland can can mold together google could squad this poland team could be super super dang dangerous uh however they're not showing it all too often as for sweden as i said not as uh, they're probably built for a tournament like this in in, in in many ways you don't have to be exciting you just have to grind out results and uh, sweden is one of those teams that can do this very 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 well i sweden switzerland those are two very very similar teams in many ways however they can have a certain spark there um you know with the kulusevskis and so on. they have a, a pretty young gen, uh, gen generation up front a little bit light maybe 
Uh, and as I said, Slovakia, yeah, they also have this diagonal pattern in, in, in a way. I honestly think the squad is a little bit too much on the old side. Uh, for me, the best players, Duda and Skrinja, those are the two that I would say could make or break this team. Um, I just don't see it. I honestly don't see it. Slovakia as a team that is past their prime uh, in many ways. So I have in this group Spain. Now for over the last project in Poland, I'm just slightly ahead of Sweden, but you know, I think Sweden is the team that could surprise people in this group. And now we're in the group of death. You can see there are three teams very high up. And the special rink is that Germany and Hungary have home field. Uh, which actually might, and Hungary with a full stadium. So against France and against Portugal, Hungary might actually be boosted. Now, the other thing is that France and Portugal are, have ridiculously talented squads. And I think if you look at the German squad, there's also quite some talent in there. This group is a group uh, drawn up in hell in many ways. And we have that typically teams from a group of death do not qualify, although uh, do not win anything except France in 2000. So you could argue that they were in the group of death. Um, so yeah, but let's look at also at the makeup. I mean, the Germany squad has a lot of players in the right range age-wise, maybe a little bit uh, like Thomas Müller, Homers and Neuer, they may be a little bit too old uh, cross. However, they bring the experience and then combine this with a Havertz and potentially Musiala. There is a lot of good stuff in this German squad. Defense is a worry. But you know, if Antonio Rüdiger plays like he played in the Champions League, <sighs> Germany is my sleeper team here. They have home field advantage. Um, and I think it helps, for instance, that Havertz was not playing all, the, all, all, all that much. If they can get it together, I think German Germany is definitely my sleeper team there. However, the ridiculousness of talent in the France squad makes them the prohibitive favorite. Hence, I'm wearing France. Uh, however, they have many minutes played. However, they can also up front. I mean, you have Mbappé, you have uh, Benzema, you have Griezmann, you have Giroud, and so you can. Uh, you have Dembélé. You can actually switch around. It is ridiculous. This France squad is loaded on all levels. I would even argue that Mike Magnon should be the goal goalkeeper ahead of Hugo Lloris. I really think so. So uh, this is a super low, low squad, but um, the minutes played might play a factor and it's really that the big favorite wins in Euros. Portugal similarly. I mean, uh, here I'm more wor worried that, that the coaches hold, hold the too, too, too much back, but you have uh, the Silvers with Bernardo and And Andre, you have Bruno Fernandes who might be knackered. That's for sure. Uh, but uh, João Moutinho, there are so many great players in, in there. This poor, poor Portugal team is also one to watch. And then we have Hungary, who actually looks quite, I mean, maybe a little bit on the old, old side, but doesn't look that bad. But however, David Soboschlein not there. That might be the big downside for them. In this group, I have another change. Germany only in third and I know the Amateur the, the Sleeper team. I can see Germany winning this group with having three home games. Uh, but France and Portugal uh, are the stronger squads, and that's why I have the two of them at the moment ahead of Germany. But it's really, really, really tight. You see, to become the first in, 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 the, in, in the group, 40, 24, 30, 33, you can see how even the whole thing is. Uh, not making it with the third place option, it could help. Uh, there might be a few draws, a few, and if you all win against Hung, 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 Hungary, four points should see you through, but I think this will be a tight, tight group. Speaking of which, third places. The teams that I have in third place are Germany, Sweden, Austria, Turkey, making it in Russia and Czech Republic out. This is, of course, mostly down to how, uh, you know, the groups and the, on average, is this can change rather, rather quickly. But this is at the moment what we have, which leads us to the following bracket and I give you the full bracket already. Now we have to talk about a few things here. Uh, I have considered home field advantage. You see England against Port Portugal. England, there could be an argument made. You might get an easier draw if you finish second, but only an easier draw if you um, consider only the round, the round of 16. Group F is a big problem for England. If England finishes first, you play against the second team from Group F. 
which is definitely more talent squad, but at least you have a home game. If you finish second, you have to go to Copenhagen and then to, uh, to Russia, and you have the first place team from Group F in your path, which in this case I have France. So um, I think for England it doesn't really matter all that much. I think a team that definitely could think about uh, not making first place is Italy. Look, Italy would play a Ukraine, which is doable for them, but then run straight into Belgium and then into uh, France, if they would beat Belgium. Not easy. However, if you finish second, you play against Denmark, which is not easy, but probably harder place than Ukraine. But then uh, the winner of Group C against the third place team, which in this case is Germany, and then you're kind of England and Spain. I think for Italy, a second place might actually work out quite well. However, you have to see as it in, as the, tour, the, the, the tournament evolves. Um, and we can go through, but those were two teams that I... For England is talk, talking a lot about second place, but I think for England, first place is crucial. Stay at home. You have a tough game in the round, the round of 16. But if you go past that, it actually might turn out fav uh, favorable for you. Um, I think the big make or break game for them is the quarterfinal in Rome. I think this is, if you can make it past that, England would be favorite all through. If England were had a higher rating than Spain, uh, as soon as they make it to land, the home field advantage in my model would push them all over the line. The way I have it, if everything goes by plan and it rarely will go, I have a France-Spain final. I don't see Spain making it, I see France make, ma ma making it. France slightly ahead of Belgium, notabene. Yeah, slightly, slightly, slightly. You see the, the ratings are really, really close. 51% chance of making it. So uh, very interesting there. Uh, also with the third place teams, this is a crapshoot. As I said, in many ways, we have to see how it evolves during the tournament um, because anything can change there. But at the moment, I think that the upper part of the bracket is more low with having Belgium and France in there. Uh, and then a potential Italy team. This to me seems harder than Spain, uh, England and the Netherlands. So I think trying to get, I think Italy should go for a second place. However, finishing third in the group F might also not be the worst thing because that actually will most likely get you into this lower bracket. And then you have a clear path to the, to the final. And you saw my first pre prediction. I had Portugal finishing third, and then suddenly they are uh, all the way in the final. It is all possible there. I want to finish with the overall favorites because I had in the most likely bracket France winning, hence I'm wearing the jersey, but overall Belgium still has the slightest of slight chance more of making it to of winning the tournament this is because they have it easier to make it to the next round France is in a group of death and you can see this if you look at the chances of making it to the round 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 16 Belgium is quite uh, substantially better than France there as is England as is Spain as is Italy this also hurts the chances of Portugal so uh, making it out of this group will change a whole lot of things uh, for these teams. As you can see, France makes it in, in, in first, their favorites to run it all the way to the final. So uh, this is something to watch there. So therefore, I still have Belgium up ahead of France, then ahead of England. England is carried by home field advantage. Definitely by home field, 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 field advantage that actually undoes the effect of being a slightly overplayed squad. And so I leave you with these chances. It's a long video. Um, let me know what you think about these projections. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, if you made it all the way through all 35 minutes of these. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so or, or already. If you want to see more videos of our Euros, I'm planning to do a daily video where you get my projections as well as, uh, as, well as talking about the games. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay updated with everything that happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.